Hey everybody, happy new year. First time I've had a chance to uh, record any video since the New Year's weekend. I hope everybody had a good and safe holiday weekend. Uh, we had a delightful time uh, spending it in one of our favorite places in the country, which is Door County up in uh, Northern Wisconsin. Uh, absolutely beautiful, wonderful time. I am going to start working on the rub rail and the gunnel molding and plans call for clear pine. And so what I went and bought was two pieces of clear pine molding. Now this is uh, three and a quarter inch base molding. It's got a little bit of a curve to it, but I am going to route it anyway. And my idea here is to take these boards, rip them basically in half. Uh, I'm not going to quite rip them in half because I'm going to have the uh, rub rail be a little bit wider than the uh, than the gunnel molding. I'm going to set up a fence in order to rip it with my jigsaw. Now jigsaws aren't the best tool for ripping boards, but I don't really want to get the uh, circular saw set up for this, mainly because I'm very limited in space in this, in this work area right now. The work area is a disaster from the winter. Things just get piled up there. Uh, this is in my garage, by the way. Uh, and that space just collects things over the winter. So I cleared off just a little bit of space here. I'm gonna set up a fence and then use the jigsaw uh, to run it down. It's just a little bit easier to handle um, than, the, uh, than the circular saw when I've only got a foot or so space between the workbench and the front of the, uh, the Lund trailer right now. I'll get the camera set up and I'll start setting things up and get these two boards ripped and then start shaping them with, uh, with the router. It's gonna make a mess. So I'm probably gonna cover up most of the stuff on the table. This boat's already covered. You know, it's just sawdust. It, can cl it cleans up. This is the setup. I got the board clamped to the table and then here's my fence uh, that I have set up. Yes, the clamps are in the way. So what I'm gonna do is start on that end with the jigsaw, run up to the clamp, uh, pull the jigsaw out, move the clamps to the end, run down to this clamp, move those down, and then move the entire fence down this way, reclamp everything. It's gonna be a multi-step process to get one board cut. And then when I get to here, uh, I'm gonna to have to actually take the whole thing off, flip the board over and reclamp it and fence it uh, back down on that end. So hopefully this all works. Let's get to cutting. Okay, ready, set. Let's rip it. <laughs> Lots of dust back there, I need a mask. last section here the, the board was stable enough that it worked out okay so this is the wider of the two pieces by maybe three sixteenths of an inch or so that's a pretty straight cut boy this board's really got some warp in the wrong direction it's got to bend this way we'll see how that works um, but yeah I got to figure out how to clamp this down to the table and then route it. Uh, I'm not gonna record the next board because I'm gonna do the same thing, but I'll come back when I route. Okay, I have no idea how this is going to work. If it's gonna work, if I'm going to ruin a piece of wood. But I have this clamped down <clears throat> to get the half inch radius put on it with the router. This is going to make an absolute mess. And I gotta figure out how to cut the, route the rest of this. I'm probably gonna have to set up saw horses with a board to get just this section done. This mask with glasses, absolutely horrible. 
All right, so I routed one side of this already. I, I wanted to uh, just be sure that the setup was gonna work. So I routed the rough side. Uh, everything came out pretty good. Now I'm going to route the uh, factory side. This is taking a long time to do, so I was really hoping I have gone to the store, got the bolts that I need, had some lunch, and be ready to bolt this on the bolt the boat this afternoon, but I'm not there yet, so still routing. except for about uh, maybe 20, 22, 24 inches, which sticks out that way. So I'm gonna slide the board down all the way to the wall and get as much done as I can on that end. taking off the little bit of roughage from the router. Not concerned about getting it super smooth. It is gonna get covered in fiberglass. <clears throat> Not sure when I'm gonna do that because the plans call for fiberglassing before installing it. I'm still trying to figure out why because that just seems like an extra step to me. Here's how this looks. So it went from a square board to probably about an inch, inch and a quarter round, but only about, it's around a half, I guess it's a half inch thick. And there are no, there's no pieces of trim out there that I could find that were a half inch thick that had a half inch radius. And as wide as I needed it to be. So what I have left to do on this board is from here to the end, this has not been routed yet. So I'm gonna have to set that up on a sawhorse with another board to finish out that routing. And <laughs> that was one board. It took 20 minutes for one board with all the setup changes. So I'm gonna set this one aside, go get some lunch, run to the hardware store, Come back to this this afternoon. Okay, here's how I'm going to route the remaining portion of each of the boards. Uh, just set up a simple uh, makeshift table. Got the uh, edge flush with this leftover uh, piece of board from something. I think it used to be a workbench. And I'm just gonna have the other end resting on the workbench here. And because it's a very thin piece, it's flexible enough to go down just a little bit and uh, I'll have plenty of stability to uh, get this routed. So I will get this done and hopefully, hopefully this will allow me to get these pieces done here in the next half hour or so and I can uh, move back inside. Okay, here's the last little part of uh, getting these boards routed. This is the fourth one and I'm on the last section. So I'll go ahead and video this part. Get these boards clamped down. here. Okay, I took the uh, two pieces of baseboard, turned it into four pieces of uh, gunnel and rub rail trim. These came out very, very nice. It was what I would consider an extraordinary amount of work though. Way more work than I thought it was going to be. Got a little cleanup to do. It's sawdust everywhere. Yeah. Here is the uh, starboard side rub rail installed front to back. Uh, took a jigsaw and just chopped off the uh, 
length right at the at the uh, transom and the inside is right now just a washer and an acorn nut the outside washer there's two of them on there the outside one um, meaning the one closest to the acorn nut will get switched out for a star washer or a lock washer i thought i had them but i don't it's kind of cool to see that's that's in place now the instructions do say to right here make and fiberglass whoops make and fiberglass rub rail and gunnel molding prior to installation as i said before uh, i don't really think that's necessary it's attached with hardware and the whole side's going to get covered in uh in fiberglass anyway so i don't really see the the need to fiberglass it in place i mean fiberglass it before it gets installed it's just an extra layer of fiberglass fiberglass for um, no real reason other than maybe protecting the boat but you know if you don't slam into docks that's not going to be an issue so i have seen pictures of other uh, micro tug nines that i think have just guys have just found a way to, to fiberglass this onto the hull without hardware i kind of like how the, the hardware looks i think will look kind of cool once it's painted so the uh, gunnel trim this does have to be fiberglassed on or at least resined on um, right along the top here i'm not sure yet how i'm going to do this uh, whether it's just going to be resin and clamps or if i am going to have to use some hardware at the front uh, similar to what i did with the rub rail <clears throat> just because this curve is pretty sharp and i'm afraid that if even if i resin it in place that once the clamps come off it's going to spring off or spring out so might use some hardware the first uh three feet or so until it gets around that curve might use hardware all the way back we'll see i'm gonna take a look at some other pictures and see what it looks like so longer day than i thought but nice to see the uh rub rail in place all right well good morning i don't know if this view is really going to work but i'm going to be drilling holes here here uh mounting the port side rub rail got the hole drilled in the uh Rub the front of the rubber already, so I'm gonna go ahead and drill this hole, and all I gotta do is match those two up, and then I will start working my way down. Music today is Lake Life Radio on Pandora. Hardware for mounting one and a quarter inch carriage bolt, washer or two, and an acorn nut. This first one is very difficult. That's all the further I can get that on there at this point. All right, that's stuck enough for now. Now I'll drill a hole in this and then drill the hole there, match them up. When I get all these done, I'll come back to the front. sucks all right well i've had a few minutes to cool off um that really pissed me off so the uh, board broke pretty much right where i drilled it um i mean obviously drilling a hole creates fractures among the wood and apparently the bend was just too sharp, even though it worked fine over here. <sighs> what pisses me off most is that was, I mean, it was so much work to get these four pieces made. Because even if I resin it back together, it's just gonna break again, I would imagine. 
I don't know. Back to the drawing board or resin it back together? You gotta think about this. Okay, well, I figured rather than starting all over again, I might as well try and uh, resin it back together. So what I did was just mixed up a little bit of resin, slathered it on the joint, and then wrapped it with uh, packing tape. Packing tape will come off and we'll see if this works. Fairly straight crack back here, but there's lots of surface area um, as it goes forward, the crack comes forward. So I don't know, maybe, maybe it'll work. That's, I was just thinking I might as well, might as well try it before uh, going to plan B and making a new part. So we'll see if this works in a few hours. I'm going to uh, glue the gunnel molding on. I'm gonna just wait on the port side for now, get the starboard side done and then I'll come back. I'll do the port side gunnel molding and then do the rub rail at the very end. Uh, just because <laughs> I'm mad at that piece right now. So it doesn't make any sense, I know. But I'll wait till the very end to do that one. But for now, I've got all my clamps set up here and this should be fairly simple just to clamp the rail on. I don't know if I can show it because I don't know if the piece will go over there that far. But yeah, you can't see it. I did, I shaped the front end a little bit. I'll show that when I, after I get it all clamped on. I mixed up uh, nine tablespoons. Could be more than enough, I, I'm sure. I'll slather it around elsewhere if I have extra. All right, so I'm just gonna coat the whole, well, I don't know about the whole rail, the whole gunnel, I mean, but let's go ahead and get a layer on a part of this. And then I'll put a little, a little bit of, Resin um, molding. nice and flush all the way down as well the curve looks nice and it's flush with the top except right there which I'll trim off that little bit of uh, paneling I think everything else is nice and nice and flush and um, like I said, I might put in just a couple of, uh, of uh, bolts like I did here, maybe, I don't know, it's a pretty thin piece, um, but I don't want it to snap off of there. So I'll take clamps off slowly and see what happens, but that'll be later today. So time for a cure. Okay, well I had a little bit of a Somewhat of a revelation tonight, I guess you could call it. My thought is in so if I can soak the rub rail, the resin is already set. And if I soak it in water overnight, I happen to have a 10 foot piece of PVC pipe actually attached to my, uh, <laughs> attached to my sump pump drain outside, which it's winter, uh, sump pump's not running. So one night not having this out there is going to be fine. I'd, quadruple duct tape the end of it, filled it with hot water, and then uh, stuck the uh, board in the piping. 
It's leaking a little bit, but I think it's a very slow leak. And hopefully overnight, uh, maybe that'll make it pliable enough to maybe install it tomorrow without it breaking again. This might be all for naught, I don't know. Uh, it's just kind of a last ditch effort uh, to make this piece work because it's already cut to size, it's already routed. Rather than going through and make the whole process of making another piece again, I'm gonna try to salvage this piece. Hopefully it works. If it doesn't, I'll, I'll make another piece. That's just the way it is, so not a, not a huge deal. But I thought I'd give this a try. We'll see what happens. Uh, also, I've weighted down the, uh, the gunnel molding for the port side to get it to try to, to bend the other way because <laughs> it, it also had a slight bend in the opposite direction where it needs to bend to be installed. So I uh, don't know if this is going to work or do anything, but we'll see what happens. Okay, back to uh, doing the same thing I was doing yesterday morning. I uh, changed plans a little bit yet again because I was gonna do the, the gunnel molding on this side. Uh, the other side's done, I'll show you that in a minute. But since I'm all set up to get back to work on the rub rail on this side. You may recall from watching a few minutes ago that uh, the board snapped when I went to lightly tap the carriage bolt into this hole. Here's the board. It's uh, This is the glue, this is the resin joint right here. And if the board is soaking wet, should it be more pliable? So I'm gonna give it a try. If it breaks again, it breaks again. Not, uh, like I said before, not the end of the world, but I thought I'd give it a try. So I'll get this front bolt put in first and then try that second one again. <laughs> well, that didn't take long. Uh, okay. New board it is. All right, well, since that's not gonna work, I will work on the other side, that side over there, do the gunnel, gunnel trim. So here's what it looks like on this side, unclamped. Came out very nice. I did add a carriage bolt here, one in the middle right there, and then one at the very end. Probably not necessary, but it gives it a little extra security to hold it in place. Plus, I do like the look of these carriage bolts. I will switch these out to stainless steel. So the hardware will actually show on the gunnel molding, the gunnel trim. Those um, down there, I still haven't decided yet whether or not I'm going to fiberglass over that or switch those out for stainless steel hardware. I really do like the look of them, so I might tape them off, fiberglass around it all, and then just paint it. We'll see, not sure on that yet. But uh, this is all done. You can see here, I meant to show this uh, earlier, but I, sh I shaved an angle near the front here because this has a little bit of a, of a curve forward. You can see it right there. So I started the taper right there and just brought it up to the, uh, the stem. That's really good. So now I'm gonna work on this side, get it all uh, resin in place and clamped just like I did this side. And here is the uh, starboard side. It looks like it squeezed through here. All clamped in place. Sorry, weird angle. I skipped a few of the clamps because I don't really think they do much good. There's, there's the spring clamps right there. Uh, I'm, I don't know, I might throw them on, but I don't think they're super necessary. But this one, uh, just like the other side, turned out nicely. Did the same thing on this side by tapering the front end to match that little bit of a curve uh, as it goes forward to the post, the stem. But uh, everything looks good, so I'm I'm gonna the rub rail. That's gonna kind of have to uh, be put on hold for just a little bit. Number one, because I don't have any other suitable boards to cut or route for it, so I'm gonna have to go back to the lumber store probably tomorrow figure out what's going on with that. I won't record installing that because it's the same as the other side and uh, hopefully I'll just shape it and get it put on. Push it back up against the uh, the door here and not worry about it anymore. So I'll wrap up this this part of the uh, the video with um, just putting on the, uh, the gunnel trim. So 
that's done. I'll leave these clamped for the afternoon, come back out here this evening and uh, put bolts in, put the bolts here, and then, well, you saw the others on the other side and do the same thing on this side, so. Um, I did have a question on uh, one of the other videos about the cost of this project, and um, I'll answer the question there, but I'll, I'll go ahead and address it here as well. I am pretty much keeping track of what I'm spending on this project, and mainly because the same reason that the, the, the person asked this question is there isn't any real information out there on what the actual cost to build is, and because you can't just go simply buy one unless somebody's reselling one that they built. The only way to get one of these is to build one. So I will, at the end of this, I'll put together a, a video um, just going over the, the costs of, um, of what I have in it so far. I mean, everything so far has just been plywood and a few, um, few little pieces of hardware. This, I mean, the, the trolling motor is a Minn Kota. 70 pound thrust, uh, just like it calls for in the plans. That's been the most expensive part of the build so far, uh, which is about 400 bucks. Batteries are gonna be um, probably the next most expensive thing. Just plywood and epoxy. I would guess at this point, not including the motor, I probably have $250 into it. Just estimating at this point, I'll probably have about $1,000, $1,200 in this, um, including the trailer, which you have to purchase a trailer, uh, which I'll just get at Harbor Freight. You can get a four by eight folding trailer there with the coupon for about 260 and then make the mods to it. So yeah, I think trailer and everything is gonna be around $1,200. Uh, so we'll see, we'll see how accurate I am. I am kind of keeping track of it. I'll put together a, a spreadsheet and then uh, do some, uh, do a video with costs associated after everything's finished up and it's sitting on the trailer nicely. Paint, that's another thing. Um, I do have a color scheme in mind. Uh, it's gonna match our, our big red boat, Clifford. Uh, it's gonna be white and red. I'm not gonna paint it in a traditional tug color, just simply because it's not a tug. I mean, it's, it's, it's just a re recreational thing to go out and sit on the water and, and drink a few beers on. There's lots of, of uh, tug looking mini tugs, micro tugs already built. Brittany and I talked about this, so we're just gonna paint it to match the, the big red boat. I think next, other than getting this piece of rub rail purchased, shaped, installed. Other than that, the next step is to do the motor through hole fitting and the steering mechanism first. So uh, I go from the trim to the through fitting, steering, and then we go to making the modifications to the trolling motor. So that's probably a week or two away at this point, I would think, but yeah. NFL playoff weekend. Time to go inside and grab a beer and watch some football this afternoon. Bye everybody.